Hello, Channel Automation Podcast listeners. Welcome back to another deep dive into the techniques that convert leads. I'm your host, Casey Arise, and I'm joined again by the infamous Vic Sun, back to deliver information about the latest innovations being made in the home improvement industry and how we are able to do autonomous scheduling with AI. He's going to get into more detail about that shortly. How you doing, Vic? Good. Yeah, very busy. And um, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm happy that the weather isn't blasting hot yet, but I feel like it's coming around the corner. At least that's what all the meteorologists are saying. So it's getting there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not looking forward to that. Probably like roast the trees outside. In fact, some of my trees actually burned from last year. They almost caught fire, which was lovely. Yeah, it was. It was. It was yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the desert. Exactly. Yeah. You got, you got the wildfires, <laughs> and then when it rains, we get the erosion where you get landslides. <laughs> so. Yeah, we, we get a nice assortment of weird shit. Anyways, um, uh, let's go over what we are doing in terms of scheduling. So we're going to be talking about the lead to review process. Not only do we want to stop at, or not only are we going to be going past sale, we're trying to get to the reviews. We have a lot of different tools that let you automate those uh, each and every step except for installation, of course. But we're going to be going through um, sort of what each thing does bit by bit. So go ahead and take it away, Vic. Oh, and if you are listening with audio, make sure that this is the one that you're actually looking at the screen because we're going to be showing you some cool stuff. Yeah. So I think um, the you know everybody's trying to talk about it, but we are the ones who've actually been doing it. And we've been doing it for um, the past year and a half. And that is autonomous, enjoyable experiences in which you get leads and then you convert them into either appointments and or sales, right? Uh, where you can pass them along to your sales team, to your production, to your installation, to your fulfillment uh, teams uh, so that they could go ahead and complete the transaction. Um, so it really starts off with how, uh, and, and we'll have visualization of this, is how we ingest leads into our system. So we work with lots of lead sellers, you know, um, shout out to to companies like Buyerling and Profitize and Modernize and, and, and again, lots of uh, lead sellers out there, um, who, you know, who, who recognize that at the top of the funnel, they want to work with the top companies who can help them with the conversion as they sell these leads and appointments to the consumers, right? Um, and so one of those things that we do is first we get the leads, we ingest them into the system. We know through line type intelligence, whether it's a landline, if it's a fixed VoIP or non-fixed VoIP, for those of you guys, um, most of the, these particular numbers, if they're fixed VoIP, most of them are business numbers. Um, you know, homeowners or, you know, regular people don't really use uh, VoIP. OK, uh, at least it's not as popular as just having a cell phone that's been issued to you by AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, what have you. Right. So so we know. And so we can now go and ensure that these leads are their leads that can receive text messages, emails, et cetera, all of those things. From there, OK, we're doing something that's quite revolutionary in the space which is not being done by, I would say, 80 to 90% of the companies. If you're paying attention, this is really key. We are able to determine the intents based on things like what website they came from, what time of the day they did this. Um, now, if you're using Active Prospect, which we are a partner with, we can actually utilize all that data. If it's Faraday, then we use all this enhanced data to be able to essentially, at this point, provide them with customized messaging. So this is revolutionary in, in, in spaces like solar, home services, um, and mortgage and insurance, because typically the automation that most people have is basic generic messaging, meaning they know that you came from this site and they'll essentially saying, Hey, you know, go ahead and connect with us or, um, We'd love to be able for, to, to speak to you or they just call you uh, to try to convert on that lead. Whereas with our system, we're actually going to ask them questions, confirming whether or not this is the information that they're looking for. So not only are we able to go and see and verify the intent, as well as what type of leads um, that come in through the system, we're also now able to go and send the messaging back and forth through AI 
okay, that's really customized to that person. So if this person was looking for, let's pretend a quote on a roof or a bathroom or something for their home, okay, they're going to get pictures and messaging that's specific to that. And it's also going to recognize where they came from. So they're just going to say, hey, can you confirm that you were at this site and you're looking for this and you want this info? So you're going to get the highest intent people really understanding through the breadcrumbs that we that we have that, hey, this is the experience I'm looking for. This people know what they're talking about. Uh, yes, I was there. And now I want to get this information in this fashion. Okay. From that step, um, again, a touchless, uh, you might say, you know, call center, telemarketer, touchless interaction is you're going to get this customer or this prospect now engaging, right, us through text or email and saying, look, uh, yes, I'm looking for three or four quotes, or here's a quote that I receive, or here's my budget, or maybe I'm not interested right now, but in the future. And so through those interactions, we're able to detect their intents. And then for those who are ready and qualified, we're able to provide self-scheduling. Whether or not we recognize and we read through the availability of the uh, companies, or we're able to provide them with cookie cutter slots that are mostly open for those particular opportunities to turn into appointments and or consultations or follow-ups. Um, again, there's not a need for a person to do this because during this period of time, you're able to go and engage the customer. And you're not asking them to schedule an appointment or convert right away. And again, here's, here's the rub, right? Because you want to build the value of the visit or the value of your appointment or the value of your consultation, whatever that that may be, okay? A lot of companies are automating it and basically saying, yeah, we can service you. We'll go ahead and, and call you or we're calling you now. And they're essentially making the prospect feel like, okay, I can get this from you anytime and everyone gets this. So the value actually goes down. Right. Psychologically, people like it when they have to put effort into something so they find it more valuable, which is super unintuitive in this space, whether it's solar, home services, again, mortgage, because people are just like, we'll, we'll go ahead and service you. Um, from there, the appointment is being scheduled. We use video technology to go and provide them with the parameters, like what it is that's required of them. You've got to be a homeowner or maybe you've got to qualify from one or two, three things. And people can engage this, these videos, and you'll see from a visualization, they can even pick and choose, you know, the answers or type it down themselves. And from there, the videos change so that it will take them to the next step. What happens here is that it provides an enjoyable experience for people to choose how to get their appointment on the channel that they're looking for. So when you really come to think about what we're trying to achieve here, okay, for many, many years, we've been doing it for the past year and a half. Everybody's talking about it. We've been doing it. We have been able to go and turn leads into appointments and sales through the channels in which they don't want traditional phone calls. They don't want you to have to call them. They don't want 15 minute conversations. They don't want you hounding them. For those people who like that, that is fine. They're still calling you. Our system's still able to deliver those phone calls and track them and provide them with follow-ups if you miss a call. So we already have all of those here in channel automation, but I'm talking about 80 to 90% of the leads or opportunities that you are simply burning because you don't have the ability to provide automation as well as enjoyable experience on the channels like text, email, chat, um, and essentially in, in social places like Facebook and Instagram or Google. And, and again, this is the part of the puzzle that we were able to solve. Once it becomes an appointment, we can follow up with it. If you don't sell it, we already have a follow-up or rehash or revisit program that essentially gets their feedback, builds on that relationship. If it becomes a sale, we're able to take it all the way down to production um, from when their when they're installer, when their person's going to arrive to provide them with a the service or product, all the way to when we're getting the reviews, thereby completing the cycle. Some of you guys might be thinking, 
Well, at that point, can we start calling them? Well, the same people who scheduled an appointment autonomously probably still don't want a ton of phone calls. So we can use the same you know, methodology and approach and utilize the videos, text, emails, and chat to continue their experience down the funnel all the way to when they provide you with a review saying it was the easiest, speediest, and the best type of engagement that they've had, thereby increasing the potential of repeating that cycle back into a lead where they might ask for more services or provide you with referrals. That is what we've achieved in the past year and a half. So I think that's the process that we're very excited and we're able to articulate it in a very simple way. I think the one question that we now are asking is how many companies are going to adopt this quickly because the ones that don't are going to get left behind. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's something that we talked about actually on our last podcast, if you haven't listened to that one, where it's like, when should you be an adopter and how do you kind of dip your toes in? And so if you haven't listened to that one yet, we definitely recommend it. So I know that that was a very like long form version of what we do, but if you were looking for a little bit of a summary, I was actually taking notes during this. So we are able to start with lead aggregators and ingest the leads from there. And we are able to take that information that is ingested from the form, or if you have something like Active Prospect, which we work with, we can also take any kind of information from there and we can provide customized messaging based off of intents such as time of day, product, um, and other um, items and notes that they ha may have left on the way there. We are also able to ask them questions to confirm that they're the right customer for you even before they get to you and start the conversation. So we can ask them qualifying questions like, are you a homeowner? Is this the product that you're looking for? Or simply, are you this person? We don't like running into the situations, you know, we've made phone calls before too. We've worked in call centers. We don't like the situations where you're calling somebody and you've got somebody completely different because there's a bogus phone number. We're trying to like lower those um, waste of time options and those leads so that way once you get them, you're able to convert rather than focusing on garbage. You know, we don't want to do garbage leads. Um, from there, once we're already having the conversation with them, we use AI intent detection and we use Picture Plus, which if you don't know about that service already, it's customized pictures that are also taking the information from leads um, from like Active Prospect or other, um, you know, form fill stuff and giving them customized experiences based on the product that they chose. If you choose Windows, you get Windows stuff. If you choose bathrooms, you get bathroom stuff. And then through there, they're able to self book an appointment. And from there, get your team all prepped and ready to send things out. We also have automated reviews and that's it. Was that, was that a decent summary? I, I was just kind of roll up lightning. It's a good summary. We we definitely have, I mean, it's it's quite important for people to know that we've been building this for the last year and a half. And so it, it's really that complex when you start looking at all the elements that are applied to it. I think the the wonderful piece that we were able to do was to simplify it for, down to uh, science where our customers could scale their business and add on the and bolt on each piece of the puzzle. You don't have to start right away with everything. You can bolt these things on as you go along the way, um, you know, clearing the way for potentially a, a more suitable adoption as people, you know, typically don't want to go in and, and uh, companies may not want to go in and rock the boat on their current processes. Um, and, and AI is quite new. Based on what you're saying, they're like worrying about rocking the boat. Is it because like AI can't be fully trusted to complete these processes? Do you think that's what people are afraid of? Or are they more afraid of the staff that they already have and they've already invested in finding some difficulty adopting to this type of a system? Or is it both? I think it's a, a matter of just being unfamiliar with something and 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 you have a business and you're now you're you're thinking well and this is what i think happens to a lot of decision makers is they go well it's better that i'm 10% successful and 90% of the time i'm failing because i'm familiar with the 10% right i can keep going and and winning on the 10% you know and 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 people say this all the time well, i want to innovate i want to go and and do better but really the the you know the the thing that you have to pay, right? Your your ability to be able to do that is to really say, I need the help 
and this might be unintuitive for me because I'm trying to get to a level of, I'm trying to double my conversion from 10 to 20%. I've never been there. So it's really hard for people. It, it's like you've been driving a car, like it's automatic transmission. And then suddenly you say, well, we have a faster car, a nicer car. It happens to be a manual transmission. And it's still a car. It still has the four wheels. It has the steering wheel. It has the seats. It has your, 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 you know, your GPS. You know, it looks just as nice or even nicer. But the thing is, it has a different transmission, right? Um, and now you're saying, okay, well, I'm really not familiar with this. How do I make this move? But that's the part right there that I think people may be, um, concerned about and that's our challenge so i think it's about baby stepping them and saying look like this is something that you're not uh, familiar with this is where we can succeed testing it out kind of just again like riding a bike or maybe you know driving a manual or a stick uh for just for like a few days and then kind of like learning and as you get better and better and better at it then your lift uh, that slope gets higher and higher um Really, to be honest with you, it, AI is here to stay. It's not going to go away. Um, there's no evidence at all that shows that AI is going to do much worse than um, a human doing certain processes that are repetitive because in every instance that we've had 100%, and that's we can't say that all the time, but 100% of the customers that have tested it thoroughly with us and taken it to completion have remained on that program. They have seen the returns. They see that, you know, their returns are, are more than five to 10 X of their investment. And so once they get over that hurdle of anxiety and fear, um, and they're able to test it and see the returns, now they're more invested in it. So I think that's the key piece of the puzzle is that we have been able to learn from that. And so we have a program now where we don't even need to touch your existing process. We would start off with your, we call it the golden garbage around here, which is code name for, we go and tap into all the old leads, the ones that you have not converted on and through machine learning and through the systems that we've talked about, take them from start to finish without disrupting your current call center or your staff from what they're familiar with. Right. And and what ends up happening is they go, oh, we're actually getting engagement. We're getting appointments and sales and transactions and reviews, et cetera, uh, from that. And then it helps them proliferate um, to the newer types of opportunities that they may be getting. Uh, it also doesn't um, hurt the fact that lead sellers have started to use us more in the, in, since the beginning of this year. So when lead sellers are saying, well, look, we're, we're selling you the leads that are going through the channel automation system, it, it helps because now they know that, okay, well, I have to trust what the, leads, the lead sellers that are, are using you. Uh, we should trust that um, our leads are going to be taken care of. So I, I think it's, it's a more of a emotional uh, issue. But again, we have programs now that make people start at a very low level, kind of testing it out. And then it, it quickly proliferates, you know, across all their other channels of marketing. Yeah. I mean, if you have like a team of five, that's all walking into a casino and everybody knows how to do blackjack really well. Um, but then there's the opportunity to learn how to do poker. Why put everybody at the blackjack table all kind of competing against each other and maybe everybody else is at the blackjack table. Everything is all crowded and then you got an empty poker table over here and it's like, yeah, it's the it's almost an equal amount of risk, but you can spread out. You can have some of the team learn how to do poker while you're already succeeding in blackjack. Like, why wouldn't you take that? Option? Yeah, I know you did cars. I wanted to do gambling <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um. I, I think the the AI um, the AI piece is quite daunting for some people. They don't know where to start there. Even though Chat GPT and Meta, it's so much more popular now. Uh, I would say like 70, 80 percent of the people that we that we encounter really have not uh, tried it at all, or even you know um, did anything to try to make it work. Even though they may be using it obliquely in other parts of their life, um, they have not taken that to the company or to the work, um, which is interesting. Yeah, why are you talking to Alexa, but you're afraid to talk to us? Um, yeah, <laughs> or, or Siri or Google. Um, and and I think it's it's simply because they 
you know, they feel like that has no risk, right? Because they, to them, it's, well, I'm a cons- but really, if you, if you, if you think about this, the biggest risk that companies will have right now is that they will get, um, overrun by the companies who adopted this much faster and who can get there much faster. Right. And, and, and because this grows and this learns so quickly with guys, computing power, uh, you know, uh, becomes uh, better and better. The companies who technically will adopt to this and will provide it will be the for f- will be at the forefront, and consumers will s- simply adopt to that so much more to the people who provide that service. And, and case in point would be when Uber and Lyft, you know, r- really obliterated the taxi industry in 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 in, in this case in cities and sometimes in countries. Um, once people understood that this was a much better alternative, right? That was streamlined. You know, you just got rid of it. You didn't even want to go and, and hop in on a taxi, right? Or you didn't even consider it as an alternative at that point. And I think. Why would you pay per minute and mile when you can just pay like a blanket amount to get from one place to another and you already know what you're paying? It doesn't make yeah, any sense. Yeah. And you can track things and you can easily report something when there's an issue. Um, and, and you can get your money back if, if service, your, your SLA was broken. Um, and I think this is the reckoning for many industries, solar, home services, mortgage, debt collection. The experiences have been less than stellar. And so the overwhelming amount of people who are providing their information online digitally without phone calls, they're going to be this group of people that is going to stop wanting to do business with companies that insist on a process that no longer um, apply to them because there's been pro- there's providers of a service that allow for them to harness you know the experience that they are uh, in all honesty even willing to pay for right um i'd rather have that than like you you might say that if i'm a consumer who don't like phone calls and and long phone calls and and harassing phone calls then i would essentially move to the direction of a company that will say well i don't even call you unless you want me to or you can just call us when you're ready what about the upselling cuz i notice like when i'm dealing with ai right now this is something that we've never talked about so I noticed that when somebody is on the phone with you, they're like, hey, you can take advantage of this offer. You can get 20% off installation. Or like when you're talking to Spectrum, they're like, yeah, I know that we're helping you with this pro- problem, but wouldn't you also like to update your internet? Because it sounds like you're doing this, this, and this. You can brush past those guys because you're talking to a live person. But when you're talking to AI, every single promotion, and this is even at self-checkout at the store, every single promotion that can be given is given and it's almost like pop-up central you know like how do you bridge that gap how do you know when to stop i think it's training the the, you know the machine to to do something that's based on experience which there are bots or there are there's automation out there as we've said in the beginning of the podcast many companies will say oh they even put ai at the end of their domains like you know, text messaging dot AI or whatever, because they want to promote this idea that they are AI or that they are automation. Well, like you presented, there's bad automation. So I think this is what we're at the difference for us. We're experience oriented as opposed to automation oriented. Um, the experience being scalable and being bespoke and personalized comes with automation being at the foundational level of that. Whereas many companies use automation as the forefront as opposed to the experience. So it, it, yeah. Well they want to set and forget it. They don't want to they don't want to participate with it. They wanted to take care of it for them. The reason why it took so long for people to realize and for this novel thing like Uber, for example, right, where there's an app and now you can even choose if you want Uber Black or Uber X or Uber Share or Uber Dog or whatever, you know, other alternatives are available because they recognize that there's not one type of consumer. Um, whereas, you know, m- many years ago, there was one type of consumer for taxis that was as a person who wanted to get from point A to point B, 
right? And 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 that 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 uh, um, amount of of miles or kilometers, wherever you are, we would bill for that. Whereas people want choice. People want to be able to choose things. Um, I mean, it's so embedded within the human condition that if you think about how you you go just like basic things like eating, right? I mean, people want choice. They they don't want to just keep eating the same food. You know, they don't even even when they are eating, the, even if you wanted to eat burgers every day, Monday to Friday, for example, you'd probably still say, "Oh, I I want to try different types of burgers, or maybe I'll do something different to the burgers as opposed to just eating the same burger every single day." That's such an American mindset, though, because I've seen videos where people come over from other countries and they're like, "Well, I only have to choose from three detergents over here. You guys got half an aisle of detergents." I always find that really funny. I think choice allows for. Uh, on the level of experience allows for me to personalize my experience and customize, which is, I think, the thing that lots of our competitors still do not get this. And I probably would be so bold to say that they may never get it unless they had somebody like you or myself or some people in our team who've been, you know, who've been geared towards that experience level, simply because, again, their mindset is towards automating and efficiency, whereas our mindset is personalization experience and and really that's the idea behind true conversion is how do you convert to this person not to this fake audience segment or this look-alike audience where or you're just saying well everybody's the same well yeah everybody's the same in the sense that they may want this service but not everybody makes the same decisions that way so but what's really tricky is creating that perception of personalization. And if you're not about that, then you're just not about that, right? You're going to just try to make things where it's easy for you, but it's not so easy for the consumer. And I think it's high time that, you know, there's a service um, like ours that provides that choice to the consumer. So you could say that we're more consumer oriented than we are company oriented because the consumers that dictate where they want to communicate, how they want to communicate, when they want to communicate, we get that. We can automate that. And everybody else is is looking at, well, I'll automate it, but it, I'll automate it so it's easier for me. <laughs> it may not be easier for you, right? Um, and again, that's, I think the and we know how to do this because all of our team is notoriously not patient with having to go through automated things. It's like, why are you only giving me three buttons to choose from? None of these pertain to me at all. And anytime we get ticked off about something like that, when we do see AI or like single file automatic systems like on chatbots and stuff, I mean, Amazon's is okay. Um, we want to improve it and make it better. And that's what we do. And that's what we focus on at Channel Automation is something is ticking us off over here. We want to make it not annoying over on the, on our end. It is the same thing when we're working on the back end as well, because we've been working like call centers and management and also like incoming leads for years as well. So there's no point in doing the same thing when you're doing like when you're programming automation and making your software run a particular way, if it's going to make you upset, it's going to cause issues for you and your client, why install a new system, which is already going to be a difficult process to adapt to, and then you're going to sit there and encounter problem after problem. And a lot of our competitors don't take that next step to think about, like, once they make the sale, is it going to be intuitive for their users? Like, are, am I, are you trying to keep them around? Are you trying to make them happy? A lot of people don't think about that. They're like, great, they bought our software. Hopefully they'll continue to use our software. The, it's the step-by-step step piece, I think, is the thing that's daunting to most business owners or decision makers. They're, they're really trying to solve for everything at the same time. And so the most common, and we should probably do like, a short word, like the most common, you know, obstacles to making a decision in in having autonomous scheduling or autonomous conversion. Um, and for me, I can note off, you know, without a problem, the top three. Number one is they're always looking towards like completing that entire cycle instead of solving for the first problem. So the, the first problem is I can't, these leads won't set an appointment or they won't convert. They're 
looking at that and they're looking at that and they're saying, well, what if it converts? Now I've got to do this, uh, but it, it can't do this right now. So I got, and, and so they get caught up in trying to complete the entire thing when really the first thing you want to solve for is um, how do they get to the first step, which is converting into either an appointment or an opportunity, right? Like qualifying them first. Um, so we, we want to start with that. Leads, aren't, leads are not disposable. Like you don't, you don't like try to use your lead and then throw them in the trash. You're paying for that lead. You should continue to use that lead as long as it has use. I think it's it's just yeah, the the other really thing is if you if you talk about like how they treat leads or or or, or the the data that they get, it's because they really treat it all the same way. And and for them, because they've got a big budget or maybe they've got a budget for it, they've just been trained to spend that money the next month to push new leads. Where in if they just took the time, which is really, this is the other obstacle, time. You can't solve for something that you've never solved for before in like a month, especially if you've already tried. You've got to really invest time in being able to understand what it is that you're getting and why it is that you're failing and where you've been succeeding. But if you don't understand that, it's very tough to figure out like I'm ever going to succeed other than just upping my budget, selling more. Because all of the other things that you've been succeeding will also grow. So it's like producing more garbage, basically, right? I mean, you could be consuming more and you could be doing more, but in, 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 in essence, you're also producing a lot more waste, right? And, and that perpetuates. You're making me think of people eating food and then going to the bathroom. I'm sorry. I know that's not what you're getting at, but like the way that you describe it. It's- it is. It is like you, you, like if it's like you're, you're eating more, sure, you'll go to the bathroom more or maybe you'll get fatter or you're, you know, there's a lot of these things that come with that. But I think it's a timing thing. You know, people, you know, we might go and say, well, look, we discovered that 30% of your leads are landlines, non-fixed void, void from these particular lead sellers. But, and when we messaged them from three months ago to today, there was, there's, there's no, there's not been any activity. Now to some people, they might just go, okay, well, does that mean, are they real leads or not real leads? And then it's funny because when you say, well, why don't we help, why don't we try to discover it? Why don't we go and si- start messaging them and seeing like, hey, we need to confirm, we'll take you off the list if you just confirm that you're a real person and then they don't want it. So it's like you, the the customers, you know, we want to know this very valuable data of whether or not the leads are real because it's a waste of my time chasing after these people. And I'm spending money potentially 80 to 90% of the time on leads that may not be real people. It's not even potentially. You got people assigned to different older or newer leads you have people that are being paid a salary and sometimes you know health benefits you know everyone hopes for the best for these guys you have people dedicated to hitting their head against the wall on on these leads when you can have these things automated and have them do something that's you know intuitive and awesome and they can use their brain for i think is people think that they've got marketing or call center people that may be interested in that, or maybe they just don't have the bandwidth. But if I were to go and figure out like who the customers that are ideal to me and the cost for that would be to have less leads, but more conversion in terms of appointment sales, demos, um, transactions, right? Uh, fees um, that I collect as revenue. I'm all for that. I think the, the, the very last piece what we talked about, right? So we, we, we said the second one was um, time. They don't invest in the obstacles. The very last obstacle is really, um, I think it's it just this 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 greed, right? Like you you want to to keep the leads in your system or to keep seeing like, oh, I've got all these leads and you're hoarding them, but really they're not doing anything. You know, this is either greed or it could be just, um, in your case, you, you might just be used to having that and just makes you feel good to see that you're buying 10,000 leads a month and you got all this interest, but really you, you're, you're just feeding your ego. You're paying for that, for your ego to grow. It is. See, I collect Pokemon cards. I can relate. Uh, well, well, at least with Pokemon, I have yeah. thousands. I have thousands of them just in a box, yeah. and I'm like, look at all of my yeah. cool cards. But for but, what? I mean, but think about it this way: 
would you like, are, are all your Pokemon cards real, genuine, authentic? I mean, they probably yeah. are, but only some of them actually have right. use. So if you think about that in, in terms of collecting, there's there's a, there's a nuance there. Collectors want to collect a lot of genuine, authentic things. Okay. A collector won't give a damn about something uh, to collect if it was just a lot of fake things, right? Or in a, inauthentic. They would go and say, well, I'd rather have one genuine thing than a hundred fake things. Okay. And that's why they have grading for like, this is the original of right. this comic book. This is the original of this card and, type of thing. And that's why people pay the big. Yeah. And, and, you, you, you challenge people and you say, look, tell them from the beginning, and AI will do this where it will say to confirm that your homeowner do this or let us know. Otherwise, you know, we can't provide you with the information you're looking for. And to some people, they might go like, oh, don't do that because what if, you know, what if um, that turns them off and they, they, you know, they unsubscribe? Well, you have leads like that right now that actually do that or they don't pick up your phone or they they essentially ghost you because and, and whether they ghost you because you're not real or not. So the true test of somebody who's interested is to actually ask them. You know, like because if your overwhelming majority of leads that you buy or you come to you and you're not connecting with you, then you can't use the actual submission of the data as the uh, barometer for their interest that no longer can be used because the overwhelming majority from lead sources were 80 to 90 percent of the time you don't convert or you don't engage them right shows you that the majority are not interested yeah and why are you worried about those guys unsubscribing that aren't interested in you do you think that they're going to randomly become interested Again, in you if they are it's people not you yeah. know they're going to subscribe it feels better i mean really we, we talk to people all the time. I had one VP, uh, you know, recently simply tell me, you know, we've seen people basically say I'm not ready and they're engaging and we've never gotten that before. I said, you know why? Because our system was actually able to get it out of them. Whereas if you compare us to before when you were using the other platform, ghost, you were being ghosted, no responses. That is actually good feedback. The customers are telling you not, they're not saying unsubscribe. They're asking you to respond to them or to provide value. And when I said that to him, he was like, well, we don't respond to those. He goes, so I think we should respond to them. I'm like, yeah. And I said, yeah, you should. And he was like, well, yeah, we, we don't have enough agents. I'm like, well, we I did tell you two months ago before you launch to use this, but you didn't want to. You wanted to do it slow. Maybe not a good Oh, time. no, we have too many leads that are interested well, not, in us. In, in this case, it was actually people <laughs> were engaging and saying, I'm not interested. Now is not a good time. The difference here is is this small nuance, but very important data point is they used to have a system where the their, the text would go goes go out, no response, and so, and with us people were like, I'm not interested. Now is not a good time. Here's a reason why I can't do this right now, and they 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 did not understand the difference. Right, the difference is people are now actually having a conversation with you. And I found out later on why he was, you know, panicking because one, he was like, well, we not interested. We just put them as not interested. And it was so much faster because with phone calls, when they were, we would just keep calling them and they would remain. When I started to look at my dispositions, I would see a ton more of not interested. And I said, well, here's the thing. They told you they weren't interested. You never responded. If they did that on the phone, what would you do? And they were, well, we would go through um, uh, objection rebuttal activity, right? Or, or, or training, you know, our team to, to respond that way. I said, so how come you're not doing that through text and email, right? And so it's just a matter of sometimes going through this with somebody and going through the exercise. I, and I think if you, if you start looking at this as feedback and not negative, you actually learn something. And, and that learning is millions of dollars of revenue for you and your team but it's it's again a combination of fear uh time and again mindset you know that this is this is a negative or something like that and 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 again 
I don't think it goes. That's it. I I will I will debate anyone, and I want them to 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 prove me wrong with numbers, okay? Where they could say to me, phone calls is the way to go. You know, I've tried it and I've tried it in this way, and I've calculated the data, and it shows that only phone calls works. Now there might be somebody out there who can prove that, but the overwhelming majority of people, I think, that's why. Up to now, we issued this challenge to people to come in and to our podcast debate with us, reach out to me and, and go through a webinar. It's because they can't because they'll look at their numbers and they'll go, <laughs> I'll buy 10 leads and I'm only really talking to two to three people and I'm calling them 50 times a week. You know what I mean? And and my text messages, you know, um, if somebody really looked at it, isn't about experience. It's about me trying to bombard them with, I want your business or you, you need to follow this process. It was never about engaging people and having conversations and those sort of things. So I think it's 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 interesting. Um, we will be at Contact IO and MailCon and I believe we have debates going on. I was gonna say that yeah. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, sorry, stealing your time. Right, yeah. So as as Vic was saying, we are gonna be at several events like Contact IO, MailCon, and we are going to be doing debate style conversations out there if you're not able to attend those panels we also are looking to create content around those panels as well so please in terms of getting announcements knowing where we're going to be um, and being able to follow us subscribe to our linkedin we're going to be doing updates on there our facebook and also our youtube so that way even if you aren't able to make it in person you are able to see the clips and still get some of the the vibe of of what was was going on it was really fun um last time we actually had um so many people that were filling up the chairs in the room there's people standing in the doorway so these are really really awesome conversations and you get to hear the other side of it as well so not just what Vic is saying but also the people who firmly believe in phone calls in emails in other ways of communication you get to see both sides and so um it's fun it's a really good time I think um, the other one is, um, and I'll, I'll I'll say this, but I know you're you're coming up with a new podcast and stuff with them is the Grasso University. So we have um, officially have a partnership with them, and they believe that you know we can create this really good sales rehash revisit um, experience that trains uh, people through video technology and automation. Um, as well as responding to customers. And so we're very excited for that. Watch out for that. There's a ton of new content coming up in the next few months um, with our official partnership with Grosso. Um, and they're going to be using our technology, obviously, um, as well for the events and all the things that we're going to be doing. Uh, but if you have no sales follow-up or you want uh, your team to be trained or to follow up on sales related type opportunities uh, definitely this is going to be a branded uh, channel automation plus uh, Grosso University uh, campaign uh, that we're going to be offering to existing customers it's a new one so I'm very excited about that all right so whether you love or hate what we had to say today especially if you hate it Go to Vic and fight him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, make sure to subscribe uh, to all of our channels. Um, we are on YouTube. We're on LinkedIn. We're on um, Facebook. We're on Instagram. Make sure to follow us there and also say hello. And if you want to say hello directly to us and talk to our team and get some information exactly catered to your company on how you can raise engagement and conversion, make sure to reach out to us at hello at channelautomation.com. You can also go to www.channelautomation.com and set up the meeting with us. Um, you know, we won't bite. And as always, keep your lead conversion high. Mm -hmm.